Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's podcast guest. She is really like Scott and I, like just a total productivity automation geek. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, are you ready to geek out? Mark, I am ready to geek out. And I think, I think I'm going to be able to teach Nancy something today with my tip of the week. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. See, I, I have a feeling this is going to be like the one up show. Like, oh, really? Really, Nancy? Yeah. Here, oh, hold, hold my beer while I do this one. <laughs> right, right. And then, she, yeah. and then she's going to be like, oh, by the way, have you seen this script? Yeah. And then it's going to this, this could be like a marathon thing. Like we may have to break it up into like four or five different shows. Yeah. I'm scared. But could you know, be. We've, been, we've been saying Nancy's name, so we should really properly introduce Nancy Gaines. Hey, Nancy guys. Gaines. Nancy Gaines, in case you don't know her, is the CEO founder of Gain Advantages, Inc. and has been advising small businesses and Fortune 100 companies how to increase revenues through proven systems for almost two decades. She is a best-selling author and international keynote speaker. She's kind of a big deal. Nancy's been named in the top 100 productivity experts to follow on Twitter and as a global podcast downloaded in over 75 countries. Her passion is compressing the time it takes for entrepreneurs to get profitable because slow and efficient drives her nuts. Nancy Gaines, how are you? Welcome. Hey, guys. I'm so excited to be on the show. This will be a one-up episode. I can already feel it coming on. Scott, you ready? Let's, let's roll. <laughs> well, before we get into the one-upsmanship, I want to rewind the clock a bit, Nancy, and just hear how you sort of you know, became this productivity automation superhero. So how did you start? How did you end up where you are today? Sure. Great question. About three, almost four years ago now, I was in the corporate world, loved my job, and I was finding out that I was getting my work done quickly and watching other people struggle to late hours into the night. Uh, and I didn't realize I had this gift, one thing. But the real reason I quit is I was sitting in a motivational talk, and this guy, kind of like a Tony Robbins guy, was pumping us all up, telling us we need to do bigger things in life. And I'm like, no, I kind of like my job, good salary, it's very comfortable. And I had this aha, maybe I was complacent. So I pulled out my laptop right there and wrote my resignation right there in that class. And then I told my husband later. And ever since husband, then, what did your husband <laughs> say? I just have to know. So he was on a different flight. He was coming in that evening and I went to pick him up the airport and he barely had a suitcase in the trunk when I'm like, honey, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. And I was hoping he talked me out of it. Actually, I hope he, I wanted him to say it's hard. It's, we got a great job. We've got a secure future. We're paying down our house. You know, things are great. But instead he gives me this big hug and says, you got this, sweetie, go for it. And then I was committed. It was hard though. That's, you know, that's beautiful. That is, that is like the perfect support statement, Scott Todd. <laughs> okay, Mark. So could, could you have fostered that same support for like your wife comes in? She's like, I'm quitting my job. You're like, yeah, no problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, so, I, I'd like to think I'd have that response i don't i mean i can tell you right now when if i was in nancy's situation probably not i would i would have been like what you didn't tell me about this we didn't talk about this first so i think that really says a lot about that relationship oh he is awesome but you know what i think we all thought it would go so much better so much quicker being an employee is way different than being a business owner so we had some points where we're like oh, should we go get a job or stick it out Probably every entrepreneur feels that way, right? No, absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, you, you kind of have this, this issue as far as like the big buckets of, you know, the benefits of entrepreneurship. It's time, it's flexibility, it's freedom, it's, and then it's hopefully money, right? Where the employee has sort of security, um, 
but they don't have the time. They don't have the freedom. They don't have the flexibility. And then you make this huge trade off to get these things. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, I missed the security. Did you feel that way, Nancy? Oh, absolutely. There's a, just because I was a great employee didn't mean I was going to be a great business owner. And I totally thought, wow, I'm consulting to these hundred fortune 100 companies and I'm rocking it. How hard can it be to just manage me? It was hard. And I'll tell you why, because I did not have systems in my business. I was driving all over town, meeting anybody for coffee, coffee, hoping they'd buy my stuff. And that is not a system. That's a hope, a wish. So as soon as I started putting things in place, like figuring out what days I'm going to go out and network and figure out who I was going to talk to and breaking up with things that didn't work, that's, that was a turning point. So how long did that take for you? And, and was there a, a mentor that sort of helped you uh, sort of, you know, create that sort of systems light bulb or were you, were you already kind of that person? And then you get, then you're like, Oh wait, if I can do this in my job, I can do this for me. So the second one, but boy, I spent probably, I spent over six figures in education in the first 18 months, so much money that the IRS sent me a love letter and said, could you please come into our office and verify all this? So yeah, I got, I got the audit letter because the outflow was so much higher than the inflow, but the turning point I don't know if you've got this where you guys live, but we've got streets where the lights are not timed. So as soon as you get up to the speed limit, bam, you get red lighted. And then you get up to the speed limit again. Do you have that street in California and in Florida? Yeah, of course. I think uh, everybody does. Yeah, we, I, I have, yeah, I'm in Phoenix, but yeah, yeah. Well, that one Definitely street, not. I'm at the stoplight and I'm just getting really annoyed because they're just not, it's not a system, right? And I'm like, systems. These lights aren't a system. I don't have systems in my business. Hello. So I do this U-turn, went home, put all my great knowledge I spent all this money on into systems. And that's what I teach today. You need systems in sales, marketing, your team, money, and operations. Same way in, in land, right? In real estate. No systems, you're going to be a mess. All right. Phenomenal. So let's get geeky, Nancy. What is your advice to the new entrepreneur setting up their systems, what tool would you recommend today? And then also, how would you recommend that they actually create their first system and actually think about it? That's a, so, that's a big question, but. Yeah, let me, let me kick off. Do you know what system actually stands for, either of you? S-Y-S-T-E-M? No. It stands for no. save, save yourself some time, energy, money. Write that down. Save yourself some time, energy, money. It's kind of like investing. It's compounding. You put the effort in now to put in some structure and system doesn't have to be IT. It's just a process. Put the time in now. It's going to compound over time and pay back over and over. The other thing, do you know what the best system to have is? No. What? The one you actually do. Ah. ah, see what so she when, did there, Mark? Yeah, yeah, she dropped the mic on us right there. <laughs> she did, right? So we, we got yeah. some makeup to do. Yeah, so whatever, anything that you're actually going to follow. So the number one thing I would start with is get your time organized. One of my favorite things to use, and I know you use this, Mark, because I used it for your podcast, is a scheduling link that you could just send to people to connect with you. Versus, hey, are you free on Thursday at two? No, how about Saturday at one? And that is so wasteful. So number one, if nothing else, go get a, a tool. I use You Can Book Me or Schedule Once. What do you prefer? I, I like any of them, actually. I, I just use Acuity, but... Um, that works. It, yeah, I mean, just for me. I don't know if it's the best one, um, but it, it works for me. And it, you know what? It's the system I use. Scott, That's perfect. Tyler, what do you use? Acuity. Use Acuity. Okay, see? Yeah, so these, is that free or paid? Paid. Paid. Yeah, some, some of these are paid, some of them are free, but that will, let me ask you this. Do you think you got back at least one, maybe two hours of your week in scheduling time with that tool? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, like, um, just alone, the, the fact that you can send someone a link, and Mark, I think a lot of people even discount this because, like, uh, they think, like, okay, I have to, like, have a podcast or Man, I used to use this thing when I was like, when I was taking sales calls, whatever, I'd send a, a link and saying, Hey, just go ahead and book and take a 15 minute time slot with me. Let's talk about the land. People would do it. And yeah, I would get back 
well worth that time. Yeah, it's totally worth it. And and for people that don't have a scheduler, don't worry, nobody can see what's they only see if it's available or if it's booked. So nobody sees what you're really doing in that time. You can schedule a time for a nap if you wanted to. Nobody knows. So yeah, that would be the first tool I'd start with. How about you, Scott? What's your favorite tool you think people should use? Oh, I I like Hazel on a Mac. Do you do you use Hazel? Do you I have a Mac? Use, I don't use a Mac, but what does it oh, do? It see, sounds that's cool. the problem. I just won. <laughs> There's the mic drop, Mike, uh, Mark. All right. So look, here's what Hazel does. Hazel, you know the old uh, housekeeper Hazel, the TV show Hazel? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it, that's where it gets its name from. And what Hazel does is it allows you to set up all kinds of rules for your computer, right? So like, hey, every after 30 days, delete my trash. Take these files that are in my downloads file that we all know just lives there forever. After seven days, move it to the trash. Then it nice. cycles out, right? So I have my computer working all the time to, to take stuff from your desktop. You know how you just save something on your desktop real fast? From my desktop, I have a cleanup folder. So every night at midnight, it cleans whatever's on the desktop and moves it into the cleanup folder. I'm going to spend the cleanup folder for a few days. Boom, it's gone. But my favorite use, my favorite use of Hazel is when you team it up with something like Zapier, right? Wow. So, like, so now you get really geeky. So like you save a file, like you scan, like I'll scan a file from my scanner here, put it into to Dropbox and I'll, I'll label it like deed, for example. And then you have, then you have Zapier, I'm sorry, then, then you have Hazel that watches that folder and when it sees the word deed in the file, it moves it into the deeds folder because all my scans go into the same folder. It moves it into the deeds folder. And then you get Zapier that takes the deeds folder, watches that, and then it sends an email to my uh, intake manager who files and records the deed. Bam. I think Scott won. Round one goes to Scott. Yeah. All right, Nancy. <laughs> let's, let's go to round two. Let's go to round two. All right. So once you've got your scheduler, right? Right. Um, what's the next system that a newbie should set up? Their magic number. So the magic number is basically your hourly rate. So you got to figure out whatever your hourly rate is or what you'd like your hourly rate to be. Delegate everything below that number. It's below your pay grade. So you're only focusing on tasks that are that number or higher. Too many people say, oh, it'll just take me a second to book a reservation or to make a copy. All of that's probably below your pay grade. Somebody else can do it better. And this extends into your personal life. So stop cutting your grass. You could probably find someone who can cut it better than you for a lot less than you make. Stop doing your laundry. Stop cooking. All that stuff. Stop cleaning your house. Somebody could do that probably better and less expensive than your magic power number. What do you think? I feel like we are long lost relatives. <laughs> I, I feel like I found the, my female doppelganger. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Mark. Um, Mark. I mean, do you do you use that same logic, I, Scott? I I use it so viciously that it's a huge, huge relationship strain because everyone looks at me and you're like. Why do you delegate everything? And I'm like, well, it's below my pay grade. Because I look, because like, like my wife's like, well, you know, why aren't you doing that? Or, um, you know, or I'll say to her, like, why are we doing this? Like, she's like, well, you run to Chipotle and, uh, and go get the kids dinner tonight. I'm like, sure. I go on my phone I, and I order Chipotle online and have it delivered. She's like, no, just go and get it. Why are we paying this premium? To have somebody else to, you know, go and get it. She's like, you're so lazy. I'm like, no, no, no I'm efficient. <laughs> I'm like, this time I can be doing something more productive than standing in line at Chipotle. Like, I've got 11,000 days left if I'm lucky. Like, is that really what I, how I want to spend my time? I valet park. I mean, anything to save me time, I will do. It's nuts. Well, Mark, though, uh, Nancy, I, would, I agree with everything you're saying there. I agree. Right. But, um, and maybe you'll get to this, but the one thing that I would add to it is I always do one more thing in there. So I, I definitely agree. You should, you should have an hourly rate for yourself. Anything below that hourly rate you should, you should get rid of. But 
or de delegate it. But I also use the, um, I, I use this and I also teach it like in flight school, Mark, which is I look at everything I'm doing. Can I eliminate this job? And if I can't eliminate it, then I will attempt to automate it. If I can't automate it, then I'll delegate it. And, you know, like something, something like, um, you, know, you know, I've got the robotic vacuum cleaner. I mean, like maybe who doesn't, right? Like you guys are probably like, duh. But man, if I can automate something <laughs> to, to save it so I don't have to delegate it, that's like a dream to me. And so now you start to take like, okay, do I spend $500 on a, on a vacuum cleaner or 250 on a vacuum cleaner, one of those robotic ones? It becomes a no-brainer because, man, am I going to save two hours over the next year? I could do it every year, right? I like that. Well, then I can uh, plus one that. Okay, I love how go. we're like playing off each other. So I see people struggle with priorities too. So I came up with a little formula for what is a priority because everyone's like, they're all priorities. Number one, does it make you money? Number two, does it save you money? And number three, does it systemize or automate something? If it doesn't hit one of those criteria, not a priority. Back to you, Scott. I'm going to let you win this round. <laughs> Yay, right, ding, 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 ding. Do we have sound effects on this podcast, Mark? We, I, we can edit it and create some sound effects. <laughs> um, Nancy gets round two. So let's go to round three, which is we've got our scheduler. We've got our sort of priorities. We know our effective hourly rate, so we know, you know what to delegate, systematize, and automate. And basically, if you've got a really high hourly rate, um, it ends up looking like you don't do anything. So the question then, Nancy, is <laughs> when you have a really, really high hourly rate, what do you do? What, can't, what should not be automated? What should not scale, right? What should not be delegated? What should not be systematized? What are those things for you? Probably face-to-face -face relationships. This actually frees you to be present with your clients, get new business, your family, whatever, even yourself, having some me time. Use that hour to the highest and best use. We actually call that HABU, H-A-B-U, highest and best use of your time. So I like to separate thinking from doing. I think too many people get into the doing mode and they don't step back and think about it. They just dive into a task. But if they would have taken 10, 15 minutes of that powerful hour to think about it, the, it goes so much faster because you know what you're doing. So there's some tips around, a little bit around all that, Mark. Scott Todd, what's your uh, high boo? Um, I, I would say, I would say that it, it, it is about, you know, taking, taking the time. I, I think we're going to have to like agree on this one because I think it's about taking the time to do the stuff that's important to you. I think that's really what it boils down to, whether it's, whether it's the face-to-face -face relationships, spending your time the way that you want. Uh, I mean, Mark, I will tell you that I know that you, you, know, you count down your, your number of days left, 11,000, whatever. I'm, it's been 11,000 for a while now, but. Okay. All right, let me, just, let me just check. Let me just check. Hold on. So while you're checking, I would just say that our time here is ultimately limited. And so if you can use that time that you've created, because remember, like my own thought process is that delegating and automating allows me to multiply my time. So if I can do that, then what that will allow me to do is it will allow me to live the life that I want and do everything I can do. And honestly, I don't, I mean, like this is a foreign concept to people who, who have their, their, their day job simply because of the fact that, you know, you can't delegate your work. I mean, if you have an assistant, you can, but look, we're all paid when we're sitting in that corporate environment, we're paid for our brain, our labor, whatever it is we're paid, you know, paid to lift stuff or we're paid to, to do the heavy lifting with our brains. And you can't just say, hey, um, this is Bob. Bob's going to be sitting in on these conference calls for me for, for here on out. And Bob's going to run all these ideas by me. And I'll just kind of, the, the, you, won't, you won't have a job, right? So it's really a foreign concept. But once you have your own company, once you have your own time, if you're not investing your time to, to get rid of the work so that you can enjoy your time, you're making a mistake, I have to agree yeah. on that one too. See, tied. <laughs> All right. So Nancy, I've got 11,020 days, 13 hours, 18 minutes, and three seconds left as of right now. And it's counting down. I've got, I've got the death clock. You clock. lost her, Mark. You no, lost no, her. She's no, I, I know it's his. Well, what age are you planning on? Because I'm planning on 100. What, well, what does I'm, that I'm, equal? I'm not because that's not 
this, you know, that's really, really, uh, Nancy, you know, he took the easy way out, just went to this website that will ask him a few questions and then, you know, he's not going to calculate to a hundred. I think I'm, I think I'm like the average male. If I'm lucky. 80, like, 81, 82 ish. Yeah. Maybe a little lower. See Mark, I I'm planning on going to about 140, man. You probably could, but how much of that's going to be quality though? Oh, 140. Yeah. You're going to be 140, lucid, Absolutely. active. <laughs> I mean, you know, you'll like you'll like win every 10K because you'll be the only one in your age group. You can yeah, take the right. 10K, the triathlon, the downhill skiing race. Yeah. You imagine just have my, to show up. Imagine my story, man. I could, I could be like the best known guy ever. Yeah, I mean, my, my biggest fear is losing the sense of taste as I get older. Is that odd? Taste? Taste. Yeah. <laughs> like you just, like you lose your sense of taste. Like, yeah, things, we like think it's odd. Taste taste is <laughs> bland. And I love food, Nancy. All right. I don't want to digress about my personal issues. All right. Let's get back to, uh, to Nancy. Nancy, what is the worst advice you see or hear? given in your area of expertise of basically small business consulting and, and ha having entrepreneurs get a quality of life and create systems and automation. The worst advice I've seen? Yeah. Probably trying to be everywhere, you know, instead of niching down, this isn't really mm -hmm. about systems, but people, the sooner you niche down to exactly what you do, the sooner your business is going to take off. Like you guys are very niched land and people need land. They probably think of you versus another real estate company that does, you know, Oh, we help anyone who's looking to buy a house. Well, I know probably 25 realtors and I'm not even in your field. Who am I going to send business to for a referral? Probably the last person I saw because they're top of mind. So niche in whatever your business is. Niching down. I love it. Yeah. Round three, Nancy, Scott. I, we're going to give that to her. All That's right. a buy. Is that a buy? No, <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. You're, you're up. You're up. <laughs> All right. So, Nancy, what are some of the, the, the mental, you know, sort of barriers that people have to overcome? What do people actually, you know, end up fighting you on when you say, hey, look, you got to eliminate, you got to delegate, you got to systematize here, 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 and here. I'm looking at your business and they say what to you? Oh, this is a classic what, what? question. This is awesome. Yeah. Every yeah. entrepreneur at some point when their success is really taken off, their business is just growing. They have to choose between growth and control because it's their right? Their baby. They grew this business, but at some point it's going to choke hold them if they don't let go of some control, let, do some delegation, do some automation, because they can only get so far in their business. They are one person. So they, the ever argument of growth versus control, what's more important to you? You're smiling. They can't see this on the podcast, but you're smiling. I, I'm smiling because I have struggled with this for years. And the funny thing is, is once I surrendered and began to delegate, I mean, life went from black and white to color. Food tasted better. Um, <laughs> everything was better for me. And, but it was really, really hard to let go. And I wish I knew you, you know, 10 years ago, right? Where you could have just said, hey, Mark, let go and you'll grow but it took a long, long time. And, and a lot of it was, I would tell myself, well, I enjoy this. I'm good at this. I'm being productive. Um, what am I going to do with my time if I, if I delegate this, right? Even if intellectually I kind of knew, I didn't, I didn't want to let go. So how do you help people let go? Or do, you, or do you say it's up to you? Maybe there's nothing wrong with having total control with the realization that you're just not going to grow. Yep, that is exactly the conversation. And most people are a little offended right off the bat, but they have to let it process for a couple of days, a couple of hours, a couple of weeks, and they come back and say, that was one of the best tips you've ever given me. So yeah, they don't instantly say, okay, yeah, here you go. You're right. Never. It's a big step. So Nancy, can you give us an example of something that you let go of and you're like, you're just journey with it. 
So this is really minor, but I had this eight page PDF document that I needed in Word so I could change the words around. It was a con contract, which was really good. And I didn't want to pay a thousand dollars to have it. So I got on Fiverr and I paid five dollars to this girl in Jamaica to type it because I knew that would take me four hours. Are you okay, Mark? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I went on Fiverr, I found this girl from Jamaica, paid her five dollars to type this, and I'm like, she's gonna make all these mistakes. I'm gonna have to proofread it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It came back in 45 minutes. It was absolutely perfect. And I'm like, if I can do that for five dollars, imagine what I could do with fifty dollars. Imagine what I could do with a hundred dollars. And it was a big turning point to just let go and let somebody else do something. But I was scared. Yeah, yeah. Scott Todd, what was what was one of the things that you let go of and you were really scared of? Uh, I'd say when, when I added people to, on my team to do sales, that was really scary for me because that's, that was, you know, at the time I did it, Mark, I was, um, little, little did I know, but I was literally uh, about three months away from, um, from being like unemployed. And I had just added somebody and really I was on a good roll and I didn't want it to stop. And then when I added this person, it took them a little bit of time to get up to speed and they've been phenomenal ever since. But that said, um, I will tell you that, you know, like I was really scared about letting that thing go. And I almost made the decision when I found out I was being laid off, I almost made the decision like, um, I'm going to take that back because every, every dime will, will help. And looking back, I'm so glad I didn't make that decision. Just let it go. Yeah, Nancy, what do you, what do you tell the person that, um, you know, feels like they're, they're, you know, they don't have the capital, they have to do everything themselves because they've got, they don't have the money to, to do this. That comes up all the time, Mark, for sure. So first of all, we do the same exercise we did. We figure out their hourly number. And then we talk about it doesn't have to be an employee with payroll taxes and contractors. Start small, find somebody on my favorite site. So here's a great tip. My favorite site to find help is HireMyMom.com. HireMyMom.com. This is basically mostly US-based women, professionals, college educated who left the work world to have a few kids, but they want a little bit of money on the side and they want to keep their skills fresh. You can find graphic designers, admin help, accounting, anything you can think of is on this. The list is like 25 categories and they're really good. Why is this better than Fiverr? You're in the same time zone. They're a little bit more expensive, but I think you usually get what you pay for. Ooh. Hiremymom.com. So yeah, you don't have to jump in and hire somebody full time. You can just hire different tasks. Plus the beauty is you can have three people on your team that have three really good skill sets instead of trying to find that in one person who's a jack of all trades. Wow. This is cool. Yeah. Employers join now. What do you think, Scott? Oh, and it's free like by it. the way. It's free to post. It's like match.com for outsourcing. Free like to join. It, I like it. You got virtual assistants, bloggers, writers, social media marketers, graphic designers, e-commerce. This is everything. Legal and real estate assistants. Holy cow. Yeah. And if you so, don't like somebody, you break up and you find a different person. So there's no long-term commitment if, if it doesn't work out. See, Scott, this is what happens when you have so much time like Nancy. This is what happens, <laughs> isn't it? Um, that's kind of cool. See, we thought we thought we were the only ones that had the time to find these kind of cool things, but no, I think we're gonna have to start like a, like an automation support group. There you go. With Nancy. <laughs> um, okay. So Nancy, we're at that point now in the podcast where um, we're going to ask you for another tip because uh, even though this has been great, this has been great. Um, we're going to have to have Nancy back, Scott. We are. Yeah. We're just going to have to like a, like a, Maybe, maybe the round table where we just do tools and, and like just totally geek out. I feel like we haven't enough time to geek out. That'll be really fun. That'll be super fun. Because we, we didn't really even get into Zapier. We didn't even get into, um, you know, some other 
some other geeky things like process street um you know zoom or loom or you know systems like i mean here's one more question for you like how do you define a good system I love simplicity. The easier it is, the better, because if it's too complex, like there's so many cool tools, but if you're not someone who's gonna be on your phone all the time, why get one that's an app? So I go back to the first thing I said, this is the best system is the one you actually follow. All right, so even though you gave us hiremymom.com, what is another tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go, improve their businesses, improve their lives, what have you got? I'm, can I give you two? You can give us three. I'll Absolutely. give you two. I'll give you a book. My, I just finished reading this book. It's called The 12 Week Year. The 12 Week Year. Do you know, did someone else just say that on your podcast? It's my favorite book. I actually, uh, it's like the book. I love it is. It, it compresses, <laughs> count, instead In of counting coach, every yeah. month, count it as a week. Go ahead. Yeah, in our coaching program, we actually implement with our clients a 12-week year. Cool. Well, good. Then I'll go to my second tip since you guys already know that one. It's just reinforcing. My other tip, if you don't do anything else from all this great material, stop multitasking. Because the more you try to do, the worse you're going to perform on every task. And this is actually scientifically proven. When I give a PowerPoint, there's this amazing graph, not my slide, but... If you work on two tasks at one time, you lose 20% in switching, you know, mental switching between the two tasks. Three times, three tasks is like 40%, six tasks, you might as well not even do anything. So one task until it's done will gain you back hours in your week. Yeah. Have you read uh, Cal Newport, Deep Work? No. Should I write that down? Yeah, you'd love it. He Deep. talks a lot about how people are not able to get to deep work because of the multitasking. They're constantly being interrupted and um, they can't get any, any real work done. And now that real work is becoming super valuable because everyone's got the superficial work that they're creating. You know, they're busy, but not productive. They're busy. They're not productive. They're working. And all of a sudden they get that, they got to check their email. They get ding. And just like what you said, right now they're multitasking and it goes down 20%. Someone actually told me, I heard this tip a couple of weeks ago, and I tried it. I'm not doing it very well. Only one web browser tab open at a time. I was like, oh, I need my calendar and my email and something else. So going down to one, that would be really, really Oh, I can help you with that. I can help you with that. Okay. Help me with that. All right. Do you use like Gmail? Yeah. All right. Check out. I got it right here. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Check out. Meeting Bird. Meeting Bird, it's a Chrome plugin. Uh -huh. And on one side of the screen, you have your email. And on the other side of the screen, little column over here, you actually have your calendar. <laughs> I'll try that. Thank you. Very cool. There you go, I, Mark. I, I, See? I, 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 no, because Nancy's going to be looking at her calendar. She's going to be looking at her email. She's not going to get the deep work done. I she is going to get the deep work done. She's going to do Nancy, it. My I have tip faith in her. You go to Station. Um, is it... Let me see. What is the uh, website? Is it station.io? Anyways, go to station. Uh, is it station.com? It's a, it's a free download. And basically what it does is it, let me just see this. Hold on. Let me give you the right site. Um, okay. So you know how you have your tabs, right? Right. So station allows you to literally... Um, it's one app to rule them all, right? So you just have Station. There's no reason to switch to go to one app to another app. Like let's say you have QuickBooks and you've got Stripe and you've got LinkedIn and you've got Gmail, right? It's all in one app. So you can just have that one app open and go to the one thing you want to do. Web browsers That's aren't cool. anymore. So no more web browser. That's it cool. Is, it's like a dashboard. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like a dashboard. GetStation.com. Got it. That's my cool. Tip. That's pretty good, Mark. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then uh, should we talk about Airtable? You know, we're going to have, have I have to have her back <laughs> because yeah. we got to we got to move on. We got to move on. All right. So, we don't want to overwhelm people because then there's too many ideas and nobody implements. So I think we're at right at the right number. 
Mark, you know who's going to hate this podcast? Philip Ma. Philip Ma. Philip Ma is going to hate if it. If he's listening, he's going to hate it. I know. Too many tips. Yeah, Philip has been chastising us. So, um, Scott Todd, do you want to do a tip of the week or should we just stop? I'm going to do one only because I know I, I, I have to. I have to do this one. Well, I thought I, Meeting Bird was a really good tip. Yeah, well, that was for Nancy. All right. But I, I have to go because I've become a raving fan of this one company, Mark. And I'm going to give you credit, Mark, because you're the one that actually uh, brought this one up. And then I stole it as a tip of the week, just kind of like, yeah, just playing the game that I play sometimes. But sure. I'm going to do it again. This is the third time people have, t- uh, we've talked about on this podcast, but over the weekend, I implemented it. And it's, it's my favorite thing ever. It's filethis.com. Oh, I love filethis.com. Mark, I had all these bank statements that were online at the bank and I needed to get them onto Dropbox. Okay, so I went to file this. I, I went in just very simply, just log in with your bank information. It logs in, it downloads all your statements for you. Once a week, it's going to go check for new statements for me. Puts it into Dropbox in a file folder. Mark, I've, I've gotten a little geeky with it because I hooked it up with Hazel so that when with certain <laughs> bank statements come in, I can move it over to like certain folders that I share with other people and then they get all the bank statements as well. Oh, that's, cool. that's really cool because that's really cool. Yeah, it saved me so much time as opposed to having to scan in all these things and figure out what I'm going to do with them or log into the bank and get them. I cannot recommend file this enough. You can get it for free if you need less than six connections. I'm like 12 now. It's $2 a month for 12, $20 a year. How can you beat that? It's the best. It's the best. Well, Nancy Gaines, are we good? We are good. This is so fun chatting with you all. Scott, are we good? We're good, Mark. Doesn't anybody want my tip of the week? Which is no, learn more about Nancy Gaines at yes. nancygaines.com. Yes. I will have a link. And she will get you geeky, productive. You'll learn so much. Um, and she's got a bunch of cool stuff on her website. So go to nancygains.com and stop. Or no, I shouldn't say stop. I'm going to get more of your time and be more productive. And do the things you really want to do in life, right? Is that, is that why we want to be all became entrepreneurs anyways? Yes. Right? It's like, how many people like, it's like you either have time or you have money. So few people have both. And Nancy's like, no, you can have it all, right? Right. It's not, it's not, a, bad, not a bad way to go through life. Um, I want to remind the, the listeners that today's podcast is sponsored by an automation app. It is geekpay.io. It is the only set it and forget it way to automate getting paid with your lenders for, as a lender to your borrowers. It's web-based. It's amazing. It will save you tons of time. Stop being on the phone, calling your borrowers, uh, and picking up the phone. Hey, what's my current balance? It's all automated. Geekpay.io. Get your first note free. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash geekpay. Also, the only way we're going to get the quality guests like a Nancy Gaines is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 passive income launch kit course so please do that um anything else are we good that's it mark we're good all right let freedom ring. ring all right thanks nancy thanks guys